Thus, we may graphically uh, represent space-time as a cone. Uh, space and time begin to exist at the initial cosmological singularity. On such a model, the universe originates ex nihilo in the sense that at the initial cosmological singularity, it is true that there is no earlier space-time point. Or it is false that something existed prior to the singularity. Now, such a conclusion is profoundly disturbing for anyone who ponders it. For the question cannot be suppressed. Why does the universe exist instead of just nothing? Sir Arthur Eddington, contemplating the beginning of the universe, opined that the expansion of the universe was so preposterous and incredible that, quote, I feel almost an indignation that anyone should believe in it except myself. He finally felt forced to conclude the beginning seems to present insuperable difficulties unless we agree to look on it as frankly supernatural. Standard Big Bang cosmogony thus presents a challenge to metaphysical naturalism since in the words of Quentin Smith it belongs analytically to the concept of the cosmological singularity that it is not the effect of prior physical events. The definition of a singularity entails that it is impossible to extend the space-time manifold beyond the singularity. This rules out the idea that the singularity is an effect of some prior natural process." End quote. Smith recognizes that the question, which then remains, is whether the Big Bang might not be plausibly regarded as the result of a supernatural cause. Otherwise, one must say that the universe simply sprang into being uncaused out of absolutely nothing. Thus, in the words of one astrophysical team, the problem of the origin involves a certain metaphysical aspect which may be either appealing or revolting. Revolted by the stark metaphysical alternatives presented by an absolute beginning of the universe, naturalists have been understandably eager to subvert the standard model and restore an eternal universe. In 1948, Fred Hoyle, together with Herman Bondi and Thomas Gold, uh, broached the first alternative to the standard Big Bang Theory, the steady state model of the origin of the universe. According to this theory, the universe is in a state of isotropic cosmic expansion, but as the galaxies recede from one another, new matter is drawn into being ex nihilo in the interstices of space created by the galactic recession. The expansion of the universe in the steady state model can be compared to a rubber sheet with buttons glued to it. As the sheet is uh, stretched and the buttons separate, new buttons come into being in the voids created by the recession of the previously existing buttons. Thus, the condition of the sheet remains constant over time, and no beginning of the process need be posited. If one extrapolates the expansion of the universe back in time, the density of the universe never increases, because the matter and energy simply vanish as the galaxies mutually approach. The steady state theory never secured a single piece of experimental verification. Its appeal was purely metaphysical. The discovery of progressively more radio galaxies at ever greater distances undermined the theory by showing that in the past the universe was significantly different than it is today, thus contradicting the notion of a steady state of the universe. Instead, it became increasingly evident that the universe had an evolutionary history. But the decisive refutation of the steady state model came with two discoveries which constituted in addition to the galactic redshift, the most significant evidence for the Big Bang Theory, namely the cosmogonic 
nucleosynthesis of the light elements and the microwave background radiation. With respect to the first, although the heavy elements were synthesized in the stellar furnaces, uh, stellar nucleosynthesis could not manufacture the abundant light elements, such as helium and deuterium. These could only have been created in the extreme conditions present in the first moment of the Big Bang. With respect to the second, in 1965, a serendipitous discovery revealed the existence of a cosmic background radiation predicted in 1946 by George Gamow on the basis of the standard model. This radiation, now shifted into the microwave region of the spectrum, consists of photons emitted during a very hot and dense phase of the universe. Uh, in the minds of almost all cosmologists, the cosmic background radiation therefore decisively discredited the steady state theory. Now the standard model was based on the assumptions of homogeneity and isotropy. In the 1960s and 70s, some cosmologists suggested that by denying homogeneity and isotropy in the universe, one might be able to craft an oscillating model of the universe and thus avert the absolute beginning predicted by the standard model. If the internal gravitational pull of the mass of the universe were able to overcome the force of the expansion, then the expansion could be reversed into a cosmic contraction, a sort of cosmic big crunch. Now, if the universe were not homogeneous and isotropic, then the uh, collapsing universe might not coalesce at a point, but the material contents of the universe might pass one another by. So the universe would appear to bounce back uh, from the contraction into a new expansion phase. If this process could be repeated indefinitely, then the beginning of the universe uh, might be uh, avoided. And thus, on the oscillating model of the universe, uh, we see that the universe is sort of like a concertina expanding and contracting from eternity. Now, such a theory is extraordinarily speculative, but again, there were metaphysical motivations for adopting this model. The prospects of the oscillating universe were severely dimmed in 1970, however, by Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking's formulation of the singularity theorems which bear their names. The theorems disclose that under very generalized conditions, an initial cosmological singularity is inevitable, even for inhomogeneous and non-isotropic universes. Reflecting on the impact of this discovery, Hawking notes that the Hawking-Penrose singularity theorems, and I quote, led to the abandonment of attempts, mainly by the Russians, to argue that there was a previous contracting phase and a non-singular bounce into expansion. Instead, he says, almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang." End quote. Despite the fact that no space-time trajectory can be extended through a singularity, the oscillating model nevertheless exhibited a stubborn persistence. But three further strikes were lodged against it. Uh, summarizing, first, there are no known physics which would cause a collapsing universe to bounce back to a new expansion. Secondly, um, the observational evidence indicated that the mean mass density of the universe was simply insufficient to generate enough gravitational attraction to halt and reverse the expansion. Indeed, the most recent discoveries suggest that the expansion is actually accelerating rather than decelerating. And thirdly, the thermodynamic properties of an oscillating model turned out to imply the very beginning of the universe that its proponents sought to avoid. 